Okay guys, I'm excited about this one. I've just arrived in Cheltenham Spa, which is also known as the Westgate entrance to the Cotswolds and also the cultural capital of the Cotswolds. Cheltenham Spa, what it means to me. Well, it's home of my, one of my, oh, <laughs> watch the pavement, <laughs> that's a blooper. Yeah, it's home of one of my heroes. And his name is Brian Jones. If you don't know who Brian Jones is, Basically, he's the guy who formed the Rolling Stones and he heralds from Cheltenham. I'm just going to his house where, uh, when he was born, he lived uh, for a while. It's on El Dorado Road. It's a nice, nice leafy suburb. Very nice houses, as you can see. But yeah, I've had a bit of a nightmare this morning. Got up early to go to Bybury. As I was rushing, I forgot to put my trouser belt on, so my trousers have fallen down. Oh yeah, your eyes. <laughs> okay, this is here, 17 Rosemead. Somebody actually lives here, so uh, somebody in the garden actually, so I might have to ask if it's right to film. Okay, so the person I was just going to ask actually just went uh, in the back, so uh, not the door, but nobody's answered. But I wanted to show you something. There's a, there's a plaque on the side here. Now, people of cultural importance, uh, artists, musicians, uh, engineers, etc. There's these blue plaques all over the country, and they'll state, you know, uh, who's actually lived here or born here, etc. Uh, this says here, Brian Jones, 1942 to 1969, founder of the Rolling Stones, lived here from 1942 to 1950. Okay, so the gentleman just come out, he said he's fine to actually film here, which is very good of him. The actual blue plaque was paid for by the Brian Jones uh, fan club, which uh, resides here in Cheltenham. But yeah, ever so, such a nice house. And uh, it's of great historical importance. Right, that's, that's pretty cool for me. Um, like I say, he's a hero of mine. Um, for people who don't know who Brian Jones is, like I say, he started the Rolling Stones. He found the band members, Charlie Watts, Bill Wyman, Mick Jagger, Keith Richards, etc. And uh, he was the manager of the band. He also named uh, the band the Rolling Stones. Apparently, um, when asked what the band's name was when he was booking a gig one night, there was a Muddy Waters LP on the side and it said uh, Rolling Stone on it. So that's where that name come from. But to be honest with you, Cheltenham, it's a bit kind of, how can I put it? There was a, there was a bust, actually, a commemorative, commemorative bust in the actual town centre that's actually been moved around uh, here and there. I think it might, may be in one of the museums now. Um, but the bus was unveiled, I think, about 2004, 2005. But the bus itself, it was small. Um, it didn't look, it didn't look like, like lifelike. And it was like a small token, really. Now, for a guy of his stature, in my eyes, he should have a statue in this town, you know, definitely. But uh, the uh, Cheltonians, as they're called, the, the people, the locals of Cheltenham, I read in the papers that some people were saying um, they didn't want a, a statue of a womanizer and a guy who took uh, lots of drugs. But in my eyes, you know, that's what rock stars are paid to do. That's what it's, it's expected of them. You know, if you're if you're a Premier League footballer, then you don't you don't drink. If you go out for a night out, then somebody's going to report you back to your club. That's it. You stay in. You stay in. You go to bed early, etc. But a rock star, they're expected to be a womanizer, expected to you know, be a bit of a hellraiser. So for me, somebody who's actually started the Rolling Stones, he should have a statue in this, in this town because people come from all over the world uh, to actually um, pay their respects to Brian Jones's uh, grave site, which I'm gonna also go to now in a second. Um, so yeah, I think, I think Cheltenham really need to pull their finger out and they really need to get a statue to commemorate you know, such a, such a legend. 
Rice, I'm gonna go to the it's a bit noisy around here. Rice! <laughs> Bear me a second. Right, that's a bit quiet, so I'm out of the way now. Yeah, right, okay, I'm gonna to go to another Brian Jones landmark now. The perils of vlogging. Tripping over pavement curbs, people drilling. <sighs> Nightmare. Just a quick detour. When Brian Jones left 17 Rosemead, uh, he moved to 33 Hatherley Road, uh, which is a house here. And this is where he spent most of his childhood. I think it was from the age of eight, actually, eight or nine he actually moved here, so, yeah. Okay, on to next important landmark. Okay, behind me is an important landmark on the Brian Jones Trail. This is the Wheat Sheaf uh, pub in Leckhampton in Cheltenham. At the back of the pub is a skittles alley that was used for jazz and blues midweek and this is where Brian Jones learned business acumen. He actually ran the door, took the tickets and he was at the age of 16. So it put him in good stead for actually managing the Rolling Stones when it actually it came about. Around the town there was a lot of jazz and blues clubs that he hung out but I think this one, this was the start of it really, the age of 16. Brian was heavily influenced by deep south American uh, black blues artists such as Howling Wolf, Muddy Waters, Elmore James. As also playing guitar and slide guitar, Brian was very proficient in playing other instruments. He could play the clarinet, flute, keys, you name it, he could play. Very talented guy. Apparently they do some good food here as well and a good point, so if you're in the Cheltenham area, I suggest you check it out. Okay, I'm just in the Cheltenham crematorium. This is where Brian Jones was laid to rest. His service was in the St Mary's Parish in the town centre. It was attended by Bill Wyman and Charlie Watts. Mick Jagger said he had other engagements and Keith Richards didn't attend also. He was part of the infamous 27 Club. That's uh, the likes of people like Jimi Hendrix, Janis Joplin, Jim Morrison, Kurt Cobain, to name but a few. I mean, if you want to put in the comments down below, uh, more people, rock stars who've died at the age of 27. Uh, I say it's quite a few. It's quite strange, really. There's a bit of a scandal towards Brian Jones' death. Um, he was found uh, drowned in his pool in Cotchford Farm. That's in uh, Sussex. And that was the former home of A.A. Milne. He actually wrote Winnie the Pooh. Brian actually retired there after he was sacked out of his own band. And there was fallouts galore. Also, you know, there's accusations of too much drug taking. It was very messy. Uh, the Rolling Stones kicked him out of the band. And then uh, I think it was a few weeks later, he was actually found in his actual swimming pool, drowned. Now, there's been a lot of inquest into this and I think the case should be reopened personally. There's a, a guy called Terry uh, Rawlin. He's actually wrote a book. There's loads of different stuff all over the internet. You can read into it. But what actually happened, he was found in his pool with a guy called Frank Thorogood. Now Frank Thorogood was a builder at Cotchford Farm. Based on the night in question, it was just him and Brian in the pool. Uh, There's also two ladies there at the time. There was uh, Brian Jones' girlfriend, Anna Wallin, I think her name was. And another girl, I can't remember her name, but the other girl, she was going out with Tom Keylock. He was the Rolling Stones tour manager. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a lot of things that have gone on really. It's a bit shady, but like I say, if you look into it, you, you, you'll see what I mean. It's, it's kind of, I, I, don't think, I don't think personally with what I've read and what, I, what I've seen on the internet and everything, I, I personally think uh, it was murder, if you ask me. But, you know, it was all brushed under the carpet. Yeah, no more has been said about it, but I know, uh, well, last year, I think it was 50 years since his death, and uh, his daughter came to Cheltenham. She wants the inquest open again. I think, I think the family deserve, uh, deserve justice, personally. Uh, Tom Keylock, the actual tour manager, said that he, he was good friends with Fra Frank Thorogood, and uh, he said that Frank Thorogood on his uh, deathbed told him that he did kill Brian. So, you know, make of that what you will. But yeah, a lot of, lot of scandal, a lot of, lot of mystery. Yeah, a shame really. I mean, 27 years of age, it's no age at all. They say uh, Frank Thorogood was owed some money by Brian. 
and basically the builders were sacked. Uh, there was Frank Thorogood and a few builders doing a few jobs uh, around Cotchard Farm and they were sacked uh, a day before that Brian was killed. And, and basically, uh, I think Frank Thorogood was owed eight grand. He came over to the, uh, to the farm, wanted the money. Next minute, Brian's in the, in the pool dead. So, you know, like I say, there's a lot, lots, of, lots of stuff on the internet about, about this. So I employ you to have a look. But not only that, I mean, just you need to look at the, the, the guy himself, uh, his, his legacy. He was an absolute legend. He held court with all the elite rock stars. He was best friends with John Lennon, George Harrison, Jim Morrison, uh, Bob Dylan, you know, to name but a few. And there's talks of him actually before when he got sacked from uh, the Rolling Stones that he was going to actually form a maybe a bit of a super group with uh, Mitch Mitchell, who's the former Jimi Hendrix drummer, and John Lennon as well but that never materialised but that would win some group okay I'm trying to find this plot at the moment um, not having much joy so like I say it's a, it's, it's a fair old crematorium it's at plot V11393 I think so I need to keep looking yeah another thing which is also harsh let alone being sacked from his own band uh, Keith Richards uh, stole his girlfriend as well uh, Anita Pallenberg but within the group they had a history of uh, swapping girlfriends I know it was the 60s hedonistic days but for me there's lines you don't cross and that's one of them so you know he was he was dealt with he was dealt with harshly in my opinion um, sacked from his band girlfriend stolen um, George Harrison said, basically, you know, regarding the drugs, you know, if he would have just an arm put round him, say everything's going to be okay, or, you know, if it would have been modern times, we would have went to rehab, you know, he'd possibly still be alive. So, I don't know, but like I say, what a, what a waste. Yeah, I've spent an age looking for this. I've been here about an hour now. Um, phone's lost reception, so... I want to keep hunting. I say plus V11393. Finally found the plot. There you go. In affectionate remembrance of Brian Jones, born 28th of February 1942. Died 3rd of July 1969 at Hartfield, Sussex. You can see down below there's pictures of him and there's some flowers left by fans. Bottle of red. Some uh, stones. It's quite fitting. Uh, there's a silver and bronze coffin which was sent over by Bob Dylan from America and that is 12 foot deep buried um, that's to stop fans or people trying to exhume his body like I say Bill Wyman and Charlie Watts they actually come to the funeral and uh, they said it was absolute pandemonium you know fans were rushing up for autographs there wasn't much respect but you know this this is it this is in uh, Cheltenham this is this is all you've got really and fans come from all over the world to pay their respects I definitely feel that Cheltenham needs to honor their most famous son something else should be done in the, in the town for such uh, a legend you know one of the coolest cats ever he founded the Rolling Stones and his legacy will live on and what I'm going to do now is a guy who's been influenced heavily by Brian Jones I'm going to leave a guitar pick, one of mine. Thanks for the memories, Brian. And remember, no Jones, no Stones. Mm -hmm.